Shalom. I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukha Kudash. The honors goes out to the other apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, I want to acknowledge all the Akiyam who are pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Alright, this is uh, Shabai from GMS, Denver. Uh, I'm reading Romans 10, starting at the top. This is Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to the Most High for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of the Most High, but not according to knowledge. Alright, so the Israelites, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, you have a zeal of the Most High, but, not, but your zeal, which means passion, your passion is not according to knowledge, all right? That's why you call on a false idol, J, uh, JC, you know? Because you, you you don't know this truth according to knowledge. You know, you, you just go off of what you've been taught here in your captivity in Babylon. Verse 3, For they, being ignorant of the Most High's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of the Most High. Right, you haven't submitted to yourself to the righteousness of the Most High, which the righteousness starts out with his prophets, his his uh, his true servants. All right, and if you can't receive his prophets, then he, you know, you you're not going to receive the truth, because you have to go through the gates, which is a metaphor for the prophets, to enter into the kingdom. I mean, you have to go to his men to find out what's necessary and. Um, and how to uh, how to repent and how to be received in the kingdom. For Hamashiach is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. <laughs> All right, this doesn't you know Christians will read this and they'll be like, oh you see there's no law there's no law there's no law. But the the truth of the matter is is the law is is still in effect. Okay. All it's saying is Hamashiach Yahushai was uh, you know. He was he he bringing in that redemption for those that believe in him, okay? Because you're gonna have you're gonna have because we can't keep a lot of perfection. So if if it was just uh, getting to heaven or repenting, just dealt with uh, you know the law, then we would uh, we would fall short because we can't keep the law, especially in captivity, especially in the flesh. All right. So. The belief in Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is, you know, is what, what helps us with our shortcomings with the law, okay? But it doesn't mean the laws are, are done away with, right? Because Yahweh Shai said it with his own mouth. Um, in uh, Matthew 15... Let me see. Let's see. I'm sorry, Matthew 5. And I went to Matthew 5 at first too, but I went to 15. And I, so it's 17, Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come, this is how I speaking. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law. Or the prophets, I came not, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. All right. So quit acting like you don't need to keep the laws because if you read this in Romans 10 and 4 and you don't, you don't know how to, you don't understand the scripture. For Hamashiach is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. All right. So it means. Like I said, because of our shortcomings, you know, we need Yahweh Shai. Because we're not keeping the laws to perfection. We are rehearsing the righteous acts. You know, now that we're growing in this knowledge and this truth, but it doesn't mean the law is abolished, all right? Or is obsolete, obsolete. Verse 5. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on his wise, 
said not in thy heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Hamashiach again from the dead. So, let me keep reading this. Verse 8. But what saith it, saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Right, so you have to have faith. It's, the, it's your belief in this truth, your belief in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that's going to save us. All right? It's not the law, because if it was the law, then we would fall short and nobody would be saved, right? Not even the elect, because not even the elect can keep the law to perfection in this captivity. All right? Or even in the flesh, you know, the flesh is... <coughs> it keeps us from keeping the laws. But that doesn't mean that we just dismiss the law or just forget about the law. No, the law is in order... It's in place to create order. All right. Matter of fact, the laws is what makes um, is what makes us holy, the elect, which the word holy means separate. Um, let me see. Yeah, here we go. Let's try this one. Uh, Hebrews. It's a Hebrews 7. And 26. For such an high priest became us, who is holy... Harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. Remember, separate. I told you that. Holy means separate. And made higher than heavens. Let's keep reading. Who needeth not daily, as those high priests offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's, for this he did once when he offered up himself, right? Because he was that perfect sacrifice that was offered up to the Most High Yahweh. Verse 28, For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, maketh the Son who is consecrated forevermore. All right? And I'm going to look up that word consecrated real quick. It means to make to to be made sacred. All right. So it, you know, it was a sacred thing to, for what he did. It was necessary, but like he said with his own mouth, he didn't come to destroy the law. All right. It was where the law fell short. Is where he, you know, and where we fell short from the law. Is where he was necessary to bring us back into the fold of Yahweh. All right, Romans ten. <coughs> In verse eight. But what saith it? The word is nigh, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, right? And that's why we're telling you that this is the word of faith. And we do this work through faith. 
This is what we preach. It's faith. Faith in who? Faith in Yahweh Shai. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Yahweh Shai and shalt believe in that heart, believe it in your mind, and you know, and that and that the Most High hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So you gotta believe in Yahweh Shai, because Yahweh Shai, the one who was raised up from the dead, it was no Jesus. It was Yahweh Shai. If you believe in, in, in Jesus being raised up from the, the dead, well that's a fallacy. That's a that that never happened. There's no when you know that when you get deeper and a better understanding, you know that it was Yahweh Shai that was that was raised up from the dead, not no damn Jesus. If you're believing in Jesus, this is what's going to be your downfall. Because the Lord has given us, He's lifted up the veil. He's revealed to us Yahweh Shai. So if you're still sitting there, you know, going around uh, praising and glorifying uh, Jesus Christ, which is the false, uh, uh, He's a false idol, false Messiah, created in the, in the time of the Renaissance by Edomites, well, guess what? You're not going to be saved because that's not, that's not, like, let me go to this real quick. It makes me think about John 7 and 38. It says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And the way the scriptures describes him is in Revelation 1, starting at 14, I think through about 16. Revelation 1, 14 through 16, it describes Yahweh Shai. It describes the Messiah. And he's described as a so-called uh, black person, what you would call a black person, not as a so-called white Jesus. That's why you don't have uh, rivers of living water coming out of your belly because because you, you don't you're, you're, you have no understanding. That's really what that goes, that flowing rivers of living water. It means the un, you're flowing with understanding. Right, the the truth is likened unto living water, right? But you you have uh, you you're, you're like a Deadpool. <laughs> you're pushing that JC thing, because that's not what the scriptures say. Like it says in the, what, what we just read. All right, he's not he's not described. The Messiah is not described as a stringy stringy uh, brunette with a pale face, blue eyes, uh, a Edomite. You know that's not what he looks like. So that'll be a stumbling block for for two thirds of our own people. And the heathen there, that goes without saying. You know, we don't care what the heathen believe or what they, because we know that you know they're they're not they're not reserved for salvation anyway. You know, Romans ten and ten. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Right, so with your mind, that's what makes you believe unto righteousness. Meaning you, you understand the scriptures. The elect will understand the scriptures and it brings us unto righteousness. And we use our mouths to confess or to teach. And that's, that's who's made unto salvation. That's the ones who, the, the, the elect, the ones who believe this truth. We know that only one third of Israel, according to the biblical prophecy, is going to be set up in their spirit by Yahweh Bashem Yoshai to believe the truth. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. But remember, you got to believe on him as it is, as the scriptures have said. I just brought that out, right? You can't just believe on him according to lies you've been taught or according to, you know, you know the Renaissance time of the renaissance and the messiah they created which is a false idol right there's no way the lord yahweh would create um the messiah and he'd be born with leprosy you know or aka white skin 10 and 12 romans for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him right the jew and the greek because you had the jews and then you had the Israelites who were calling themselves Greeks, right? They were calling themselves Grecians because they were in, born in captivity. Just like today, you have the, the true Jews who are the Judites, the descendants of Judah, 
right? Um, which are the, the so-called uh, black person people. But you have, also you have so-called black people calling themselves Americans today. So this is in their time that, uh, you know, our people were calling themselves Greeks. All right. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai shall be saved. So you got to know the names, all right? And it's and it's not it's not like the Christians say all you gotta do is call upon the Lord and you'll be saved. No, the elect. Because remember, what did he start this chapter on verse one? It says, "Brethren." So who is he talking to? He's he's talking to the brethren. He's talking to the Israelites. All you gotta do is read the majority of these uh, chapters and the very first verse of each chapter. There it addresses it addresses who. Or who the writer is is, uh, is is reaching out to or teaching, all right? And it's always Israelites, the brethren, all right? Verse 12, uh, no, for 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh Shai shall be saved. How then shall they call on him who they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of who they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So how are you going to learn Yahweh Shai? How are we going to teach and reveal Yahweh Shai to you if you have never believed? If you don't believe in we tell you what it is. We tell you there was no J in the Hebrew. There was no J sound in the Hebrew. We tell you that he was a so-called black person. So how are you going to know this without a preacher? Right? And a preacher who can go into the scriptures and actually break it down for you. See? You never heard of Yahweh Shai up until you came across this knowledge, until you came across this truth. That's what this verse is talking about. Right? 415. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring tidings of good things. Right? So the word apostle, that's what it means to be sent. To be sent for what? To be sent to preach. So you have the there's levels to it. You have the apostles. You know you have you have the elders. You have uh, your different levels in this truth. The heads of the camps, right? You need a man to teach you. Otherwise, you ain't gonna. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna have it. You ain't gonna get it, right? Um, and you can't be uh, overzealous or, or over. Uh, you, know, you can't be. Um, you know, prideful when it comes to this knowledge and this truth. And if if you're a, a part of the elect, the Lord's going to put a spirit on you. If you ever cross a, a, an elect man, you know, the Lord will put a spirit on you to be humble and to listen to that man and it can be taught. Not just that so you have some people, they want to sit here and debate or they want to sit here and, and uh, you know what I'm saying, they challenge and dispute the truth. They're gainsayers. You know? Watch, let me get this verse. Ethiopian, who he was an Israelite, but he was, you know, we have to remind people we were scattered in all nations. So in this account, in, a, in the book of Acts 8 and 31, the, the uh, Ethiopian is actually dealing with an Israelite, but he had the right spirit. He had a spirit to learn instead of gloat and act like he knew he would, you know, the, the prophecies, act like he knew the truth and not act like he already had the light or the knowledge. No, he he uh, he um, he humble. He was humble. Like I said, the elect will have a humble spirit and a, a spirit that's uh, ready to learn and not sitting there ready to, you know, challenge or try to, uh, you know, be overzealous and uh, and you know act like they're know it alls when it comes to the truth. Acts eight and thirty it says, and Philip ran thither to him. And talking about he went, ran to the Ethiopian, which was an Israelite who had been scattered in Ethiopia. Let me read it again. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understand thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I 
except um, except some man should guide me. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. You see? So, you know, the guy who was reading in the, in the uh, he was, you know, he was in the, the chariot, right? Yeah, like a horse, and as in a horse and chariot. So he was reading, and Philip's like, hey, do you understand what you're reading? And the guy was, he had the right spirit. He said, how can I, except a man should guide me? And that's how, you know, if you're just coming across this knowledge, if you're just in this truth, let's say you left uh, Christianity because you started uh, hearing the truth and, and, and it resonated with your spirit, and you want to have a humble spirit, like, you know, you need to be taught. You can't just, you're not going to just learn this knowledge and, and have all this enlightenment on your own, right? That's why the elders and that's why the, the prophets are set up to teach, sent out, right? All right, Romans 10. Um... Verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring tidings, bring of good tidings, of good things. Verse 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospels. For, say, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Right. And we'll go to that right now, Isaiah 53. It says, that's what, it, <laughs> that's why he said that. Who hath believed our report? To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? And who is the arm of the Lord? That's Yahweh Shai. And it says, who hath believed our report? Who's going to believe the report of Yahweh Shai? Especially when you've been polluted, your mind has been polluted with uh, JC, right? Here in Babylon. Uh, you ever since you were a little kid, you've been taught JC. Now all of a sudden, the the Lord's prophets are set up and they're teaching Yahweh Shai. Who's going to believe that report? And the answer is only the elect. All right, Romans ten and seventeen. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Most High. Right. So you gotta. Your faith is going to grow by hearing the truth. Because if you're the elect, you're, like I said, your spirit will be resonate with the truth. And you're going to hear the truth and it's going to make sense. If you're not of the elect, it's not going to make sense. Or even if it makes sense, you're going to fight it. Because you you know, you know want to hang on to the, the lies and you want everybody to be saved. And you want to go with the, the, the soft, weak, polluted Christianity, pagan Christianity doctrine. Or whatever you know doctrine you've been taught, you're gonna hang on to that those lies, and you're not gonna you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to hear the true word because you're you're not gonna have faith because you don't even want to hear it. You just like you gotta you have to hear this knowledge. You have to be taught for your faith to grow, for it to make sense. Even if you're the elect, but guess what? If you were the elect, if you are of the elect. It's going to make sense. You're going to hear it. Remember, Yahweh Shai said, My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. Right? Verse 18. But I say, Have they not heard? Yes. Verily their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. Right? And that's what's going on right now. This truth is, is going into all the earth. In all the ends of the world, in all languages, we're teaching this knowledge. The Lord set up His men, the prophets, right? Let me start at Psalm 19 and 2. Day unto day utter this, uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Meaning, you can turn on the prophets on YouTube, and they're speaking all languages, but we're all on the same doctrine. They're speaking German, they're speaking... Uh, you know, dialects in, in African tongues, so-called African dialects, right? Speaking in Spanish, speaking in uh, English, speaking in, you know, whatever language where we're scattered. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. All right, Romans 10. 
and 18 says, But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the ends of the world. Let me grab that word sound real quick in the in the blue letter. <coughs> Let's see. Real quick. All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Bear with me. I'm almost there. Romans 10 and 18 talks about our sound went into the end, into the you know, into the earth, into all the earth. It's uh. Pathangos, Pathangos, that's how you say sound, and let's see what it means. It says musical sound or whether vocal or instrumental, whether it's vocal or instrumental. So that's what it is. Remember, this song, this this truth is a, is a song. We're singing the song. We're singing the Lord's song when we teach, right? The word psalms, it literally means song, all right? Who's going to learn the song and teach the song correctly tells you that in Revelation 14 and 3. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. Right, so only his prophets are going to learn this whole song. All right, but the elect... The two, the one third, are gonna cleave to the prophets. They're gonna believe, cleave and believe to the prophets, and they're gonna, you know, they're gonna believe the song. All right. Romans ten and nineteen. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I provoke you. I will provoke you to jealousy, to them. That are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah is very bold and said, I was found of them and sought me not, that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he said, All the day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient, disobedient and gainsaying people. And the gainsaying goes into people who challenge the true doctrine. Because our people are stubborn as hell, man. You'll have people, you'll have Esau, you'll have Edomites on the street corners that'll show more reverence, more respect to this truth than our own people. Because you have you'll have Esau literally like, you know, can he and we know Esau can't get it, right? Daniel 12 and 10, none of the wicked shall understand. But but you have Esau, they at least they, they kind of um they're not as gainsaying sometimes as as I mean they are, of course. But our, our own people are the biggest gainsayers, the biggest challengers of this truth, challengers of this doctrine, the true doctrine. You see? A disobedient and gainsaying people, all right? I mean, they're, they challenge, they want to challenge the Lord's prophets. They want to challenge the mouth of Yahweh. You see? They don't know how to humble their spirit and, and just be quiet and listen. And maybe they'll be taught. Maybe they'll learn something. Right? It tells you that in, uh, is it Ezra 5 and 1? No, 4, four and 1. Ezra 4 and 1. Close out on this this verse here. <laughs> Let's see. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I always want to go to that Ezra, but it's in Ecclesiastes. That happened more than once where I get this chapter confused. See, I went to Ezra 5, but it's Ecclesiastes 5 and 2. We'll start at 
It says, Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before the Most High. For the Most High is in heaven, and, upon, and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. Oh, I should have read from number one, five and one. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of the Most High, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. So you got to be more ready to listen to the Lord's prophets, and, and don't don't let your mouth be your own enemy, especially if you don't have this doctrine, especially if you're not, you know, in this truth, especially if you're not, you know, you 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 literally got to listen to the Lord's prophets. You got to listen to us when we're teaching. All right, you can't and throw out everything you've been taught in the pagan Christian church because, you know, you're going to be you're going to get cursed by the truth. You're going to get cut by the scriptures. You're going to get cut by the Lord's mouth, the prophets. If you don't if you go over there and, and you want to, you know, give a give a, a, you know, a mouthful when you're supposed to just be quiet and listen. All right. Let's see. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that, man. So, you know, that's what it is. You know, the Lord's prophets, the Lord has set up men who have this knowledge and this truth. And, and you you got to have a humble spirit and be ready to listen. And don't sit there and blab out, blab off of the, at your mouth thinking you know something. You're right. If the Lord's not, if, you, if you're not in a, in a camp, if you're not a, one of the Lord's prophets teaching, and you come across them and you're an Israelite, you couldn't, you know, let's say you're of the hopeful elect, then guess what? Just be quiet, listen, and learn from the Lord's prophets. Don't sit there and try to act wise in your own mind, in your own heart, and you're just going to give a, you're, you're going to give a, 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 you know, a sacrifice of a fool. Basically, what it is, is you're going to sacrifice yourself as a non-believer because you don't believe if you don't if you don't if you're not set up to humble yourself and learn from the Lord's prophets, then you're gonna you're, you're basically you're set up to be cursed by the Lord's prophets because you can't even do yourself a favor and just shut the f up, you know for for just a, you know when you're in the presence of the true teachers of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, the true servants of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. So with that, I want to give all the praise, all the glory, all the honor unto Yahweh. Ba'ashem, Yahushai, Ba'ashem, Rekakudash. Double honors goes out to the other apostles of Great Millstone for teaching me the truth. Also, one acknowledge the Akiyam, pushing the truth with sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom to the elect.